Welcome back from the break. I'm Udhar Pratap Singh. You're joining us on a brand new episode of NewsX India A-List. And I endeavor to bring forth the stories of some of India's finest and brightest. Today, we've put together yet another unmissable telecast with India's who's who. Our first guest today is actor Ahana Kumra. Having dabbled in all mediums from television to cinema, she's worked across genres and delivered blockbusters in regional as well as national cinema. She recently uh, has turned host for a new television show. Listen in to this conversation. A versatile actor and host of the Inventor Challenge. You know that we sort of like really discuss like how people have pitched their ideas and how yeah. you know entrepreneurs are going about like you know with their. She's best known for her role in Lipstick Under My Burqa. You know, really like abilities to scientifically think how they can make their lives easier on a day-to-day -day basis. Newsx proudly recognizes Ahana Kumra for excellence in entertainment. Hello and welcome, Amudar Pratap Singh. You're joining us on this uh, special interview as part of our NewsX A-List series. We're in conversation today with well-known actor Ahana Kumra, who we are not firstly going to speak with as an actor, though, uh, today, because she is a host as well. Uh, so firstly, welcome to Ahana, uh, uh, this special episode, and welcome back to NewsX. Thank you so much, Uday. Always such a joy to see you. As I said, it's, you know, a conversation today with you in a different avatar of yours, yeah. a different role of yours uh, as host for Colors Infinity, new project, uh, The Inventor Challenge. So tell us something about this project, the show, how the response has been, because the episodes have already gone on air. Yes. Um, so, well, thank you so much for this really warm welcome as a host. I'm so glad that, you know, uh, I've got to play a new avatar altogether. Um, in this year because I had never imagined myself to really step foot into uh, you know non-fiction in a way like this because every time like an actor does non-fiction they always imagine themselves to be the guests on the show you know so whether it's a dance show or a, any sort of a reality show we're expected to either be a participant in the show so I think it was very interesting that that Biocom uh, you know the team reached out to me uh, completely in the other, you know, in the other direction. And I mm. actually asked them, I said, why did you guys think of me? You know, because it really came out of nowhere. And uh, so Remya, who's from Colors yeah. Infinity, you know, I was talking to her and she was like, you know what, we just imagined you doing this because I don't know, it just kind of, your vibe was similar to, you know, what we had imagined our host to be. So I said, really, that's, uh, I mean, I'm not shocked first of all, because I like the idea that I, I mean, I wanted to host at some point of time. Yeah. But of course, what you want to host, you know, really sets the tone for you. Uh, uh, and I told her, like, I'm a huge fan of MasterChef Australia. I'm a huge fan mm -hmm. of, like, this very incredible show, which is on Netflix called I Eat Cake. And I watch that with my nephew all the time. Okay. Like, we watch reruns because we love watching, like, you know, anything to do with, like, you know, confectionery right. or with food. So I think everybody in my house is, like, a huge foodie. So every time, like, you know, you come to my house, there's like, some food channel going okay. on like some food show going on you know something like that and uh you know and and uh, uh, like hardly may like the you know shark tank has become like a huge thing in yes. my house again because I'm watching it because you know that we sort of like really discuss like how people have pitched their ideas and how yeah. you know entrepreneurs are going about like you know with their uh you know with, with their ideas and what the judges say so mm -hmm. it's a huge hit again in my house so when they called me for this i was like oh my god like this is something i would love to do because you know, this has something to do with inventions. This has yeah. something to do with, um, you know, um, people, people's, you know, really like abilities to scientifically think mm -hmm. how they can make their lives easier on a day-to-day -day basis. Because mm -hmm. honestly, invention only comes out of necessity. And, True. you know, we'll invent something if we really need that thing in our day-to-day -day lives or we feel like there's a, you know, there's a, there's a dearth of something in yeah. that, you know, area of our work or, you know, whatever. So I thought it was absolutely incredible that they thought of me. But again, as, as I said, I'd never hosted before. I'd just done like a buddy before this. And yeah. sports hosting is very different from like what reality, you know, fiction television hosting is. No doubt. So I got to set and we really didn't have time, you know, like we were like, you know, we were or like we spoke and we were on the floor, like, you know, shooting okay. in one week. And, uh, you know, I started shooting and I, and I, I kid you not there, like, the pictures blew my mind okay. when I used to, because, you know, it was all happening in real time. So it yeah. wasn't a very scripted show. 
Mm-hmm. Or the only scripting that happened, I think, during the show was when I had to explain to the audiences what the format of the show was. Okay. And I was meeting the panelists for the first time. I was meeting both the yeah. Dhruvs, uh, you know, who you happened to mention that you know them. Yes. Um, you know, uh, uh, CEOs of Arata. Then mm-hmm. Sarova Zaidi, you know, who's mm-hmm. uh, another very interesting, uh, you know, human being at Paul Harvey. Yeah. Because she, you know, she's a design stu- uh, teacher. She yeah. deals with students on a day- day-to-day basis. She travels all across India, meets people for design. So I think mm-hmm. it's a very, very interesting niche sort of a job she does. Mm-hmm. And of course, Malini, you know, who we interact with like a day-to-day basis, you know, when True. we're like doing our motions and stuff. But yeah. I didn't know Malini that well. Yeah. You know, I thought like it was a great mix, a very eclectic mix of people that they had yes. on panel. And, uh, you know, and when they, uh, you know, I was, I was told that there'll be a viewing room and there'll be like yeah. a room where you know, the panel is going to be sitting and talking to our uh, inventors. So mm-hmm. we were told, first of all, don't call them participants. They are going to be called inventors. Okay. Secondly, our panel is never going to be called judges. They're all always going to be addressed as panel okay. because no invention according to us yeah. Uh, is good or bad you know okay. it's basically what the utility of a certain invention at that time is far more prioritized compared to the other one right or you know so i think that was the uh concept of like bringing these inventors into uh you know that true. room true and when the when they started pitching their ideas i had to yeah. literally listen to each and every pitch like okay. very carefully because you know, they just like, you know, they would not script the rest of it when we yeah. when I had to come and take them back. You know, I would have, and they let me ask questions, right. which I thought was incredible. So I was just like, okay. wow, like I'm allowed to ask a question. I'm allowed to like, you know, be there in the viewing room. And if I have a question that the panel hasn't asked, I can ask that question. So very, very so clearly, very different as you're saying. And this obviously distinguished it uh, and will distinguish it from other reality shows and other fiction shows in the same space as well. Uh, but were you someone, you know, who, is who keeps abreast of startups and you know what's yeah, happening uh, in, in the entrepreneurial space or was it just now after you signed on board the show no of course i think this inspired me a lot but i've been inspired for a while uh okay. you know my and i we've been wanting to work on something together um you know something related to health and fitness because both of us are into you know that mm-hmm. space and we love that and you know that's something that nobody's ever pushed us into doing mm-hmm. that you know that's something that we both primarily enjoy doing as siblings you know we yeah. when we do our trips you know together we're always either running together or we're like you know trekking together so yeah. always doing something which is more adventurous you know yeah. so we're always doing something which is more adventure based as opposed to um, they keep telling us mm-hmm. like, oh you know what we teach you sisters how to chill <laughs> you know how to wake up at night <laughs> they're like no you all can't teach us how to wake up at night okay. so you wake up at six yeah. so you know even on a holiday we're like that so i think like this also like but i think what really inspired me in the show okay. was the you know the eight-year-olds the 15 year olds the 12 year olds who are coming and pitching their ideas and actually making them yeah you know like the prototypes were ready uh because you know yeah. they went into 30 days of like you know into the lab space where they were actually sitting and mm-hmm. making the prototypes and then they won 10 mm-hmm. lakh rupees on our show and i was like i use like what was i doing when yeah. i was eight and you know i mean the most incredible story i think for me has been like actually a couple of them and i can't say one but okay. uh you know of course Manishka, who is eight and she won you know she's really a child prodigy but apart yeah. from that you know a girl called Sh- um, uh, Sh- Sh- Shaida Bano who's yeah. a 15 year old child you know she's from Baramula and okay. she came she's like in Kashmir now like you think about like you know you're in a very remote place of this country where you know yeah. internet is not accessible yes. um, you know but ideation is and fantastic sitting and thinking of yeah, and actually making that prototype okay. like wherever you may be. So I think it was incredible that I got to meet such intelligent. I mean, also, you know, I have to ask you though about who's a favorite host of yours. Well, let's hope you will become a favorite host of some of our viewers as well after this show. But who has, uh, you know, been a favorite host of yours who you enjoy watching? Um, in India, well, I don't know. I mean, I love, I love quite a lot. But I like enjoying the. 
take him here. I can't. I, I mean, a couple of them. I, I really like. You know, actually, I enjoy watching Karan a lot. I think he's very. very okay. Uh, uh, I mean, I like watching his shows. I think okay. he's very watchable. You know? Yeah. And uh, and and and. from my friends who have like written shows mm-hmm. for him they feel yeah. these lines or whether he yeah. knows yeah. and i think that's an incredible um you know apart from that of course my friends such in kumbhar if i don't take his name is going to kill me okay but you know mantra these are the yeah. guys like rajesh shirji okay you know i was yeah. all right all the very best ahana kumra thank you so much for joining us uh, uh, as i so- said predominantly as a host uh, today and not to force as in the very best our next guest for the evening today is an award winning and nationally acclaimed author satyapal chandra besides penning some of india's finest literature he's also the founder of the world's first visual web browser yes uh, take a look at this inspirational story founder of the world's first visual web browser I have built a browser and a document reader and a visual dictionary. When you are reading anything, you just tap on that word, you will get a visual meaning. Acclaimed nationally for 10 best-selling novels. All the character that is in the book, initially they seems that they are normal human being like me and you, but they have a very strange connection with 20,000 year old history. Newsex proudly recognizes Satyapal Chandra for excellence in thought leadership. Hello and welcome I'm Mudar Pratap Singh you're joining us on this special interview as part of our Newsex Ailes series we're in conversation today with Satyapal Chandra Satyapal is a founder and CEO of Magtap he's also the author of uh, the new book A Promise Among the Dark Winds welcome thank you so much for being with us today Satyapal pleasure to be here thank you for having me let me begin with you by just talking a bit about your book so tell us about the title um you know how you thought of the book and what's unique about it it's a mythological fiction it's a, a story that is set in two different time span one is 20000 year back and second is a current time mm-hmm. so this is like a love story there's a normal couple who is living in a very extremely wonderful city in india that is a fictional city mm-hmm. that is known as simphala mm-hmm. and when they get connect with each other when they try to know each other they got to know that a very strange history is related to them and they have a purpose to be here mm-hmm. so what is the purpose what is the history that is you know rooting them back to 20000 years back that is the crux of the story okay. also tell us a bit about the characters in the book you know and what you feel distinguishes them i always take a lot of time to develop character like you know what should be the character her or his behavior the way of talking the way they live where they stay everything so the main protagonist of this novel is ani she is a very powerful woman she is extremely charismatic woman and the best thing about it is that she is not a human being she is a golden angel and the concept behind golden angel is that she comes once in a generation she is the only one and she is very powerful but some strange reason she is she is trapped on earth and he finds ravi ravi is the another protagonist he is a normal human being uh, office going guy he he has his own conflicting kind of thing that is going on and then he realized that i have a very strange past and i'm not a human being i'm a monster mm-hmm. so this is the story okay. so all the character that is in the book initially they seems that they are normal human being like me and you but they have a very strange connection with 20000 year old history okay it's a mythical romance yeah mythical romance tell us a bit about this genre and also how challenging was it writing this book satpal it's a very challenging to write a mythical book like you know mythical everything is imaginary suppose you are creating a new creature if you are creating a new character you have to look after the all the small element a story should not go to, go out of flow character should know go out of flow how they live how they behave and it should be for the sustained period of time so it is little challenging because we don't know anything in reality we just imagine a world so beautiful so strange so fascinating and we write it okay uh, also i want to ask you a bit about uh, the research as well what kind of research went into this book yeah before writing this book i have done a lot of research because the setup is complete mythological so first i have you know, created a city the very different city like city of simphala so i have created a city and i have done the research the main research i have dived into about a rare planetary event that is rare, rare astronomical event that is known as 
planetary alignment because the history the story originated from this particular event and in the real life it happens once once in millions year mm -hmm. rare planetary event so i have researched everything about how these astronomic things work so i can come with the little scientific touch with the story mm -hmm. okay i have to also ask you because that's a question you will get asked i'm sure very often once people read the book is there a sequel already being planned because the ending i think says to be continued yes yes because i have just a little bit part of a story this is a part of a huge story so i'm planning a couple of sequel okay uh, tell us now a bit about your business let's talk about that magtap uh, what was the concept behind it what's unique about it how has been the response why should people use magtap yes. The abbreviation of mag mag tap is magical tapping. So, like you're tapping on something and then magic happens. Mm -hmm. So, why we have built mag tap? What is mag tap? In a nutshell, mag tap is a productivity tool. It is built to eliminate the language barrier. Look, mm -hmm. in India, we all face language barrier. Like, suppose your background is Hindi, someone is from Tamil, Telugu, Odia, Kannad, and you know we read content in English medium. 80%, 90% content right now in online in a digital book. Mm -hmm tend to happen in an English medium. So I have built a browser and a document reader and a visual dictionary. When you are reading anything, you just tap on that word, you will get a visual meaning on the word on a go. So it won't consume your time, visual represent better, it improve your retention rate. So eliminate the language barrier, we have built MacTap. Right now, MacTap is being used by 40 lakh plus people. Average people are spending 15, 20 minutes every day on MacTap and we are expanding our business. Okay. Where do you see it going? What's the future looking like? I think if you look at the India statics right now, 50% of Indians are not having a smartphone. And I, I just said that we are also a visual web browser, world first visual web browser. So over the time, I'm hoping next coming three to four years, we are going to be the first point of contact to internet to a lot of Indians who are going to use internet. Over the time, we are also going to empower a lot of businesses, you know to let their content being read by wider set of audience and at the time, let them help in monetization. Yeah. So this is the plan. Okay, uh, let's now talk about the how you balance the two because they're very different being an author and being a CEO. How do you balance the two and also are there any similarities between being an entrepreneur and being an author? Yeah, I think, I think the most, you know, connecting similarity that I, I have found is being an entrepreneur or being a writer or being a creative guy, you, we both create something out of nothing. In both sector, you require lots of perseverance. You know, people gonna challenge you. People are not going to believe you, what you are creating, what you are writing, what you are making. Even in the sector of entrepreneurship, suppose you are doing something for, you know, sustained period of time, people will challenge you. Oh, this is not going to work. Everyone has tried that. So the most striking similarity between both that, they both create something out of nothing. Okay. You know, I want to tell our viewers something very, very interesting about Satyapar. He was from a Hindi medium school. He was once turned away by a waiter for not speaking English fluently enough. So that's your past. Cut to today, you've written 11 books in English. You founded your own company. You're working with people in an app that's predominantly in English. Yeah. How did you do this? I think as a human being, we all are born with some set of our shortcomings, challenges, disabilities, whatever. So because I, went, I was a Hindi medium student, so this was a challenging for me to learn English or speak in English. But like everyone has their share of imperfection. So I got to know that when, once upon a time, I was humiliated by a waiter because, you know, I was placing order in Hindi and you have given me an alien look. So I thought that no. I'm going to overcome this challenges, situation, because there is no point to just whine about my situation. I'm not knowing that. World is not going to listen to me. So I have a fixed deadline, like six months. I'm going to learn English by myself. Mm -hmm. And then once I learned English, I understand the potential of this language because there is a vast of content that is unexplored to read and learn. Mm -hmm. And I think this is the shortcoming just because of that I have found MacTap. So I'm helping, I think, millions of people in India to read content. So I think this has come out out of my own pain point. Mm -hmm. So this is some, some, I think at some essence, it is a boon for me. Yeah, yeah. no doubt. Uh, everyone goes through successes and failures. What have you learned from your failures and what have you learned from your success? I think success and failure is a part of life. Like, you know, what is the success and what is a failure? If you distinguish this, both are the outcome. If you are doing some work and result is coming the way you want, it is a success. Result is not coming the way you want, it is failure. 
I think failure is your best teacher. Like success, when you become successful, you will, you know, you will be a little go out of extra proportion kind of thing. But when you fail, it becomes your best friend. It teaches you, you should not do that. You should put calculated effort. If you, you should do this, if you should do that. So I think we should embarrass our failure as our best friend. So he can guide us that you know, this is the line and limit you should not cross. And this is the perfect line and limit like our best friend guide us. You should not drink, you should do that, you should not do that. So I think this, failure is our best friend. Okay, last couple of questions to you. Firstly, any more books being planned? I think a sequel of this book is being planned. Okay. Yeah. Anything else as well? No, I am working on a, a couple of concepts. One is related to renewable energy and one is related to consumer electronics. So I am going to found two more companies by the next year. Oh, fantastic. So a lot in the uh, future for you? Yeah, a lot. And even okay. for MacTap? Yes. Even for the MacTap, we are expanding MacTap. We are op opening new offices, hiring new people. Mm -hmm. Two more companies on the pipeline and a couple of books in the pipeline. Okay, last question to you. Uh, you know, for people who are watching you, who are getting inspired by your story, you know, uh, what's the advice you'll give them? What's something that you'd like to tell them? Uh, I think, I just want to say, a lot of people say that whatever you do, you have the astute passion. But I think, moreover the passion, you should have the obsession. Like, you know, with passion, you can work for six to eight hours. But, but today's time, six to eight hours working is not sufficient. So whatever you want to do in your life, apart from being passionate, be obsessed. Like, this is my life, I'm going to put my life blood into that. Mm -hmm. If you become obsessed for what you want, you will attain it someday or other. But you will attain it, that for sure. Okay. Thank you so much for joining Thank us, Satipal, uh, founder and CEO of MacTap, and all the very best. Your new book, of course, A Promise. Among the Dark Winds. Among the Dark Winds. It's, it's out. Yeah. And people, of course, can read it. And then if you do enjoy it, well, already there's an announcement that's coming from Satipal that a sequel also is coming very, very soon. Thank you once again for joining us. Thank you. Thank you. And our next guest for the show this evening is bringing a mother's touch to baby care. Yes, she's the founder of Mate. Priyanka C. Raina is transforming how we curate products for babies. Take a look. A chemical-free Ayurvedic baby care brand. It's a brand which has a lot of love involved, a lot of um, motherly care involved. Mate offers a healthy dose of love and affection. It started as a very small family of parents who joined us and now it's growing and growing. But uh, what makes me really proud is that all parents are superbly happy with the product. Newsex proudly recognizes Priyanka C. Raina for excellence in social entrepreneurship. Hello and welcome, Amudar Pratap Singh. You're joining us on this special interview as part of our Newsex A-list series. We're in conversation today uh, with Priyanka C. Raina. She is co-founder of Mate Priyanka. Uh, welcome to the show. Thank you so much for being with us today. Hi there. Thank you so much for having me for the uh, interview. And it's truly a pleasure to be part of this. Uh, yes, let me start out by just talking to you a bit more about the journey of Marte. So tell us about, firstly, the name, uh, how you uh, decided to name the brand Marte and uh, how the brand was born. How did the journey begin? So Marte is something which came out of my passion as a mother. I uh, when Gracia was born, my uh, daughter, um, right after that, I think I started with the project. And uh, it's a brand which has a lot of love involved, a lot of um, motherly care involved. Mm -hmm. So I thought Mate was an apt name for that because it could truly resonate with the soul of the brand, with the um, philosophy, the ethos of the brand. So that's how we came up with this name. And um, yeah, the journey has been very uh, incredible. It's been now uh, three years. We recently completed three years and the um, uh, response of the parents is amazing. And that just makes it wonderful for us. Indeed. Uh, how was the response? You know, when you first entered the market, how was the response like? Um, the response, of course, uh, when we entered the market, it's not a very good time for us because right mm -hmm. after that, we were hit by Corona and there yeah. were a lot of and uh, we were very, very new in the market. So a lot of um, execution had to put on hold and uh, the reach and awareness was challenging at that stage. But from last one year, I think we're expanding and we're adding a lot more new products. And But uh, one thing which has always been consistent is the positive feedback of parents, of mm -hmm. course. Uh, 
it started as a very small family of parents who joined us and now it's growing and growing but uh, what makes me really proud is that all parents are superbly happy with the products they love it and uh, their retention is very good and they come back with like they're really truly part of the family with a lot of suggestions we want this we want that can we have one more product like this so it's it's a fully homegrown brand yeah. and that communication with with my community makes it really special mm-hmm. indeed uh, also i think uh, is is the vision driven by sustainability so i think you're uh, consciously avoiding chemical products is that correct and you're trying to make the brand as sustainable as possible yeah so me myself i'm a very um, i'm a person who chooses only natural products that's always been when it came to when it came to choosing products for my baby and i searched the market i was very uh, overwhelmed to see a lot of medicated products lab made products but there was barely anything which could resonate with my my search yeah. you know i really wanted to use something which is all natural which has no chemicals no fragrance no color so there's a whole uh, like long list for a mother that she doesn't want to use this 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 on the baby and that's exactly what i kept in mind when i was uh, going with this whole exercise of uh, formulation of the product okay. so um, i have been very um, adamant of how the product should be how the how pure how safe and how efficacious it should be because i'm using it on my own babies right yeah. since the beginning I think right after we started with formulations and testing, I have been using it on yeah. my own children. So that's make that makes it very important for me to you know that what I'm using for my own babies, I give exact same quality and purity to other babies mm-hmm. out there. So truly practicing what you preach, uh, as you are saying. Um, I also want to ask you a bit about your foundation, you know, uh, which you've also named, in fact, after your daughter. Uh, tell us a bit about how the foundation was born and what the objective is. so our uh, foundation was again born with a lot of motherly concerns um after grassy was born of course um there was a completely new phase where i was going through this uh, postpartum phase and i went through a bit of a postpartum depression as well so it was a bit of a difficulty for me to yeah. deal with that in phase and i think for a lot of new moms there are a lot of unknowns Okay. and just because of lack of awareness they go through a lot of issues mm-hmm. so that is when i started working on the foundation the sole purpose was to help mothers uh, know about pregnancy mm-hmm. about uh, maternal health reproductive health and um, i started very small working through the slums in mm-hmm. delhi and then i expanded to other cities yeah. other states and then we even did a program in the prisons for all the female because i feel the uh, kind of awareness mm-hmm. we want to raise is important for any mom or any woman yeah. so we added programs for adolescent health mm-hmm. because as a girl when you're going through different phases of life it's very important that you know how to handle yourself yeah. you know how all changes you're going to go through so it's very important that we have that open conversation with young girls yeah. so that they start to themselves mm-hmm. in emotionally physically mentally and um, then they are well prepared when they enter the phase of motherhood or they enter the phase of uh, maternal health mm-hmm. okay uh, clearly of course i i can tell that you know motherhood has changed you a lot because uh, you know the brand of course was born uh, because of your own motherly instincts and of course the foundation as well so how has motherhood changed you i have to ask you priyanka so uh yeah i think um it's a it's a unique journey nobody can do yeah. that and it's a journey which you have to experience on your own mm-hmm. uh i have always been very career oriented i was working in the mm-hmm. netherlands before i moved back to india yes. right uh, my daughter's birth basically so it's nothing like you know and you know how to, how you're going to deal with it right it's a journey you go through you experience you embrace yeah. and it was a lot of change i changed my career i had a baby i changed country so i think i got a different perspective yeah. altogether life and how i want to move forward how i want to lead it how i want to set examples for my own daughter and my boy now my uh, sanrio mm-hmm. so uh, for me it's very important that i lead by examples for my children okay and being a mom mm-hmm. your work revolves around them so yeah. i want to you know for me it became very important to give back to the society and do things which were more meaningful mm-hmm. and how the entire perspective changed for me 
no doubt and congratulations also you recently been awarded our newsx shakti award as well at our we women want conclave so what is your first reaction to receiving that i think it was an incre- incredible honor I'm really humble to receive it and i truly appreciate for uh, recognizing my efforts thank you so much okay i also have to ask you about you know your husband suresh shine and how involved is he uh, with the foundation and do you talk to him about your work as well about the brand as well and the vision and the response and different ideas absolutely i think suresh is uh, somebody who's carrying an incredible experience of mm-hmm. the field on the field and uh, while these guys are contributing to the field of cricket they also learn a lot of uh, competencies soft skills like leadership decision making and you know all this is an incredible so- source source of uh, experience for me to get mm-hmm. from him he's always been there through and through uh, he's an he's a fantastic father a very very supportive husband and uh, whenever i have something i always discuss with him we share things and um, he's always been there to direct me through you know this might be good for your foundation this is something you might want to put on hold so his involvement has been very consistent and very useful for me and and how do you think fatherhood changed him uh, you know mm-hmm. as a person and maybe on the field as well because you've obviously observed him very very closely interestingly the same conversation is happening now about hardik pandya you know uh, because a lot of people are saying that his fatherhood and you know marriage perhaps has changed him uh, into the player and the leader that he is today so i want to ask you the same question about suresh so no, undoubtedly i think having children changes you as a whole you become responsible you become more aware of your surroundings and your purpose in life and that mm-hmm. happens with everybody because mm-hmm. now your life revolves around your children right you want to give them the best and you want yeah. to give them an environment where they prosper they grow they flourish and yep. uh, that has happened with me and Suresh and all the parents out there mm-hmm. so you have become so responsible you want to be with your children yeah. you want to you know, um help them become a perfect human being that's something which is the most important thing for us we want our children first to be the good human being and then anything else so yep. Suresh has been very very um part of the whole process very yeah. involved he's a he's a fantastic father he's okay. all the kids love working out with him swimming yeah. with him. so he he's the fun side of parenting um yes the side of the parenting i have to be more involved with yeah. school work the things children don't like and he's yeah. more of a side of the parent okay so balance clearly final question then priyanka before we let you go uh uh you know i'm sure there are a lot of girls watching you today young girls uh, who want to be like you who are inspired by you uh what's one piece of advice you'd like to give them i think i would say that you just follow your heart what you want to be in life what you want to do and um um it's very important for you to be an independent person it has to it, it's really important for you to be financially independent emotionally independent so um life is long you mm-hmm. go through several phases in life and every phase has different kinds of challenges so mm-hmm. being prepared being aware and knowing what exactly you want from life is very very important so stand up for yourself stay strong and follow your heart thank you so much uh, you've certainly done that and uh, continue doing that thank you so much priyanka sirena for joining us on news x today and wishing you and your brand mate and your foundation all the very best thank you so much they lovely having a conversation with you for more such videos subscribe to the news x youtube channel hit the bell icon